We've been talking about David Dobrik a lot. <laughs> and they responded, actually. Specifically, one of the Vlog Squad members, Scotty Sire, which, with peace and love, I don't know anything about him, but that sounds like the name of a poodle. Scotty Sire. <laughs> Scotty. Okay. Scotty Sire. You know, Shredder's name was originally yeah, Scotty. Right. When we picked him up, his name yeah. was Scotty. I'm like, nah, he ain't no Scotty. Yeah. Scotty. <laughs> but yeah. You remind yeah. So Scotty, I guess, and Scotty, incidentally, is like, um... Scotty doesn't know. What? Say what? Scotty doesn't know. Is that a song or something? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Thank you, Dan. For Thank that. you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that input. Well, he doesn't know, actually, because right. he made this video, ooh, which, in my opinion, like, I was like, okay, either they're not going to respond or he's just going to apologize to Seth, you know, which is the mature good thing to do, make a statement being like, you know what, I was wrong. We yeah. used to do a lot of stuff back in the day that wasn't okay, and now I've grown up and mature. Well, actually, they put out a video basically attacking and threatening Seth. Mm -hmm. Now, this is Scotty, who's like the most... I guess, from what I understand, because I'm not super familiar with the Vlog Squad dynamic, but everybody seems to like this guy, Scotty, and he has a really good reputation among them. And so it seems to me that David used this guy for, and his good reputation to put out this video to try to get the best response. And the reason I say that is because Scotty includes in his video a clip of David. David sent him a clip of text messages of him with Seth, and David is narrating it. So clearly, you know, David knows he, Scotty's making this video and is supplementing him with information. So this isn't just Scotty's opinion. This is definitely David's opinion as well, mm -hmm. which to me speaks volumes because this was like the worst possible uh, response because um, it's like classic victim shaming, victim blaming, victim dismissing. And now... Seth is actually getting just a ton more shit and hate. And, uh, you know, I, I, I messaged Seth to say, hey, do you want to come in today to talk about it? And at first he was like, yeah, I'll come in. And then, you know, um, after a few hours, he said, actually, you know what? I don't want to go and talk about this, like, on the record anymore. It's getting like, and I, I'm assuming just because it's just getting too crazy for him. Especially because there was insinuations in the video that David could be seeking uh, a legal Suing remedy. Suing him. Yeah, against yeah. me and... Right, I still. <laughs> uh, um, and Seth. Yeah. I mean, the thought doesn't frighten me at all, but it but it would to Seth. I mean, I, I mean, it still scares me. It's not anyone. In, oh, I it's, am I mean, up for a lawsuit. It's it's not something anyone wants to go through. It doesn't matter. Like you know, it's just such a ugly process, <clears throat> expensive, disgusting. Well, I've already been through one defamation lawsuit, so yeah. trust me. I mean, I've already defeated I'm, one defamation lawsuit. So, bro, you ain't fuck. You ain't winning any. I'm not. Me. I'm not as scared as I used to be because we yeah. know so much more now. Yeah, but but even defending yourself legally is super it's expensive. Awful. So even if Seth like hypothetically has like a ironclad case, it's still life ruining to get yeah, sued. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah. So they scared him, and they and what they're doing is scaring other people. You know, I talk to other people who have crazy things to say, but they're scared to come forward, and and um, stuff like this obviously discourages that further. That is exactly why I always laugh when people try to say like about certain victims when it, when it's like one person against a famous person. They they always say, "Oh, it's just clout chasing." It's like. You don't know how much shit they're going to get just for coming out against someone who already has a fan base. Yeah. The fans don't want to hear that. They think they know this person and this person exactly. is the best. Which you'll see in Scott, Scotty's video. So, like, this whole immediate accusation that you always see of, like, oh, they're just doing it for the fame. They're just clout chasing. It's like, no, this is the worst way to get any clout. It just drives you away from social media. It drives you away, away from everything because all you're getting is just more trauma basically for sure. that's what that's what seth, uh, seth said originally is that like he wants to forget all this he doesn't want to relive these moments you know what i mean constantly also something interesting to say about scott as we watch his video is that he is an investor in dispo which means he has a vested interest zoom out on the picture because i think it he this is yeah, yeah. 
he has a vested interest in maintaining David's good image, obviously. Now, I'm not saying that had anything to do with his responsibility, but it's I'm, like I'm con saying... It's like conscious or unconscious, you do have a vested interest. Yeah, in I mean, it, it's, it's a conflict of interest, right? A, uh, you know, yeah. it's like you can't just come out and defend... You know, it says investor. David just posted this. When he posted this, maybe like a few days ago on Instagram? It was from last week, I believe. Last week. Yeah. So Scotty and Jason and a lot of those guys are investors in Dispo. So they all have a vested interest in protecting the brand and the image and everything, you know. So a conflict of interest for sure. Worth, definitely worth bringing up, I think. Um, so I wasn't really sure how to respond to this video exactly. I'm just going to play it and pause it and respond as I... I have so many thoughts about this video. There's so much I want to say about it. Um, and I'm not really sure the best way. So I'm just going to play it and comment as, uh, as we go. Seth gave me a comment to read. I'm going to read it after we respond to all this just because... Um, just because you'll have the full context if you haven't yet seen his video because it alludes to certain parts of his video and stuff. So let's just go ahead and watch. Uh, basically, David Dobrik respond via proxy Scotty. I mean, pretty much, right? I mean, I was I thinking to myself, how funny would it be if whenever you got in shit, you sent me right. by, by myself that's to apologize for you? Dude, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. I mean, that's exactly what happened because people like you more than me. So let's say I do something messed up and I go, Ela, can you go out there and explain things? And then people are more receptive because they like Ela. That's what Scotty's doing. You know, this just goes to show how... Uh, that just goes to show how um, disposable ain't just the name of David's app. It's how he thinks about his friends. He's like, send Scotty out to the wolves. <laughs> and also, there's yeah. a lot of cult-like vibes that you'll pick up in mm -hmm. this video, too, which is what Big Nick was saying, is that it's kind of culty, and you'll see that here. Because Scotty's one of the beautiful people, right? He's one of the good, one of the... He is, he is, right? You know what I mean? Like, he's one of the uh, insiders. He's one of the cool kids. Okay, here we go. What's up, guys? I am totally sick of seeing my friends' names get dragged through the mud because of false allegations and lies and just things that aren't true. So I'm going to address some of those allegations and defend my friends. They haven't said anything because typically the vlog squad does not address rumors and lies and gossip because it platforms the person telling the lies, draws attention to it, and we know who we are. We know our character. We know we're good people, and we know it's not true, but... I thought Already. That, yeah, I mean, I thought this was really interesting. Already he, setting the tone, right? I mean, he kind of gave something away when he says that we don't platform lies. Mm -hmm. We don't respond because it platforms them and it gives them attention. Yeah. What if they're not lying, though? Right. Right. But he. But what he's actually giving away is that they do have this, that this spoken happens, rule. <laughs> this happens kind of frequently is yeah. what I'm getting. <laughs> right. And they have this spoken rule to just ignore. Ignore. Don't give attention. Mm -hmm. And it's all, I mean, look, all of it's untrue, apparently, according to Scotty. By the way, in the very beginning, he says... He says of Seth again, and this is why people are going and shitting on Seth. What's up, guys? I am totally sick of seeing my friends' names get dragged through the mud because of false allegations and lies and just things that aren't true. So I'm going to... So he's, he, continue, he, always, he keeps referring to these allegations by Seth as false and lies. Yet you'll notice throughout the video, he does literally nothing to dispute what Seth said. Um, I don't know how he missed the point so badly, man draws attention to it and we know who we are we know our character we know we're good people and we know it's not true what do you mean but we this it doesn't involve you that's the other yeah. thing we're good people what? we know who you are I'm, nobody's accusing you of anything like i feel like maybe this comes from a good place of you thinking you're defending your friends but it's just not right this isn't your place to even say something no it's one a, is talking about you yeah but now you're coming in and throwing more shit at the person who's got the false allegation apparently based on why is it false like you have it's not including you well, the guys that are involved in it should come and say something yeah the fact that he's even responding to this it, it, but this goes back to the cult like thing it's like yeah we we we, we. it's like no 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 no. <laughs> david is the one that's and profiting. jason david is the one that's moving up david is the one that's fucking uh blowing up as your channel i mean i was kind of whatever i'm not gonna say yeah. it, but 
But it's not wee wee wee. It's David, 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 and he's using you yet again, bro. And this has nothing to do with you. And somehow you're putting yourself in in front and to shield David from like this these this onslaught of bullets. And like you didn't have to do that, dude. Because yeah. now you're in the fucking mud with him. You didn't help him at all. You're just in the mud now with him. You it's, know what I mean? It's just even more revealing of their whole culture. We, we, we. We're good people. We're good people. So there's no way. By the way, according to Trisha, she, that Scotty wasn't even involved in any of this stuff. He wasn't there during the pranks. He wasn't there during the Seth stuff. He barely knew Seth. So, like, you don't know, dude. It's like, doesn't involve you. To a point where it's such a serious accusation that it needs to be addressed. Everybody makes mistakes. I am not an angel. I've definitely made mistakes myself. I love that and he said that it's such a serious allegation. It should be addressed. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what everyone is asking for. <laughs> that it should be addressed by the people. <clears throat> not by you, fuck. Not you. <laughs> but that is all people are asking for. <laughs> right. Just address <clears throat> stuff. David and Jason right. and whoever is involved directly in a situation. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of un unconscious irony of this whole <laughs> yeah. video, you'll notice. Make mistakes is to learn and grow from those mistakes. That being said, telling a lie is a mistake itself and there's been a lot of that going around first of all david's a great person jason's a great person in fact they're both fantastic people david doesn't have a mean bone in his body he's so nice when someone does something that really upsets him he gets disappointed instead of angry and be like why'd you do that like that's not cool dude okay and this part was so just so weird to me so weird he starts by saying these guys can't have done this because they're great guys they're really nice to me yeah also he goes he goes <laughs> Uh, Shredder just got a scent of uh, Scott's bullshit. <laughs> he goes, uh, David doesn't get mad at people. He just, he just gets, gets disappointed. disappointed. It's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> what is he, your fucking grandmother? The, and I also, thought that was how a much little friction? Weird. Like, how many, t what, what is there to be mad about so much? He doesn't get mad at people. Oh, I'm just. It's kind of funny that they have so many unspoken protocols. Right. He just, he's <laughs> such a great guy. He only gets disappointed at people. Never mad. Look, Again, very the, culty. The thing is that he may be nice to you, and that doesn't mean anything about how he, what he does with other people. Of course. Especially because Which Scott, is again, he's one of the beautiful people. That's, again, why you shouldn't really be involved in this conversation. But what, what does that say about their, the power dynamic where David being disappointed means anything? Yeah. It's like, I'm dis like, who fucking cares? You know what I mean? Be mad. Be mad. What does it mean, be disappointed? He's not your parent. It's just odd. No. It's just, I find that statement very odd and telling, like, from a psychological standpoint. Oh, I wonder if David's going to be showing some disappointment to Scotty for this one. Not anger, though. Just <laughs> disappointment. Jason also is, like, the sweetest, most caring there for you anytime you need okay, him cool. person. I'm glad he was nice to you. So have exactly. you heard Trisha? Have you, <laughs> have you yeah. heard like she ended up in a mental hospital? Yeah. I'm glad they were nice to you, dude. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> were you in a relationship with him? <sighs> it's crazy how he can miss the point. Once again, I truly think that in the age of Me Too and everybody's so woke about issues like this, the very fact that it's a male victim just makes everybody forget about everything they ever learned in the past 10 years about it. Mm -hmm. Because this is just classic victim dismissal. And, you know, this kissing prank, I guarantee you, if it was instead of Seth happened to like Natalie, which is like this girl that everybody loves, it was uh, uh, where Jason was putting his tongue down her throat and touching her thigh and her back, that this guy would be fucking... This guy would be outraged. Mm. Jason would be a decent go to jail. You know what I mean? Like, it so obviously would be pure outrage if the if the genders were reversed. I would like to think that, but I honestly don't I think, even know. I think it would be. People get away with a lot of shit. Because mm. it... Okay, I'm not going to make assumptions. About to see them being attacked like this is just like... It's ridiculous. If you watch David's vlogs, you've seen people come and go from them from time to time. And it's always that person grew apart, their career path changed, they didn't want to be in the videos anymore. And, and sometimes it's because they did something that wasn't cool. And it's like, all right, we're going to distance ourselves from you now. And that's it. And I think that right now the how internet- many, How many people are you guys inviting to your circle that are being need to be cut out? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes people join the vlog and either their careers go fucking uh, sideways or we have to cut ties with them. Okay. Sounds healthy.
that is fueled by a lot of unsubstantiated gossip and lies, and that sucks. You gotta be careful with what you're putting out on the internet and the claims that you're making without verifying them. If you're telling a this lie and it snowballs, oh, yeah. it becomes something that you cannot take back. You can't retract it. And then you just end up damaging people's lives for no reason and probably damaging your own life as well. So I would just like to say, don't call it sharing your truth if you're sharing a lie. Barrel, that is like the most ironic statement ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't call it, it's not your truth to speak on. <laughs> this has nothing to do with you. And he continues to call it a lie. And you'll see th as we go through that, there's no fucking evidence that he shows that Seth lied about anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Seth lied about nothing. Um, he says, what, what do you say? He, he directly uh, addresses me towards the back, but I'm going to go back. Right. Because he's well, here he it. says that don't spread a, a lie that will snowball and ruin people's life. Right. That I think is directed to you. Based on the ending. Damaging people's lives for no reason and probably damaging your own life as well. So again, well, I'll, I'll respond to him, I guess, when he mentions me at the end. But it's like, this is Seth telling his story directly. He says, do your research. I don't know what more research I can do other than having the account of the person it happened to. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, I mean, that's, that's a firsthand account, bro. That's like as solid as it gets. I mean, what do you want from me? Exactly. Apparently, and then they always, they, he said, you should have reached out to David. <clears throat> I'm sure David would respond to me about this, just like he's been ignoring Seth for two years, just like Philip DeFranco said he reached out to him and didn't get comment. I love this expectation that I need to reach out to everybody and just wait forever for them to give me a mm -hmm. response. Like, I owe them that. It's not it's like just, we have a relationship with David. We don't. Also, this isn't 60 minutes, bro. Like, I mean, <laughs> but like, you, he wouldn't have responded to me. He doesn't respond to anybody. You literally if just said. If he wanted to say anything, he's got the biggest platform in the world. Just say, I mean, what do you have to say? He started the video by saying that we don't respond to this shit. But right. I should have reached out to Dave. Yeah. Okay. Okay, dude. So, I would just like to say, don't call it sharing your truth if you're sharing a lie. Yo, that's like the most <laughs> fucked up thing. That is just seriously <laughs> such, so stupid. I mean, it's so, uh, it's so missing the point. I can't believe that he actually said that. That's what, that's exactly what victim shaming is. Don't mm -hmm. share your truth if the truth is a lie. Who are you to determine that, bro? Yeah. Look at that smug face on him right now. He's like, bro, I just, I just, I just did something to you. I just did something to you. I cannot. His smirk. <laughs> it's not true. What was that? Your sound bites are coming in. Kind of low. Back. I cannot. His smirk. I didn't even hear it. His smirk. His smirk. Oh. I accused David and Jason of sexual assault for a kissing prank that was done in 2017, which is so <laughs> fucked up because he was part of the videos, he knows what we do, and then after the prank was finished, David asked him. Not too long after that, I had an idea to pull the prank on him again, so I thought it would be fun to pull you I think we'll be alright. Get you to make out with Jason. I'm very confused by that because how the hell could you be so confident to tell me that I have to consent to something that I'm not going to know that I'm going to do? <laughs> David films hours and hours of footage and crams them into four minutes. And okay, so again, 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 I have to say, he accused me of not doing research, but he clearly didn't even watch our interview because we fucking addressed this. But also, he, he brushed so fast over the first incident. He, he's, he's mentioning there was a kiss in prank. Yeah. And then he goes into talking about the second time. Right. So right away. The, the point, the big point here, Scott, is that the first one, there was no consent. And that was the really And the first one was the trauma. <laughs> you know, and so... Um, I don't know how you missed that. Mm -hmm. But then he goes on to say, oh, well, he filmed him. So his evidence that that was okay is that, well, he filmed him the second time. And what he said clearly is not giving consent, by the way. Mm -hmm. And also, as David's, as Seth said in the interview, if you watched it, which you clearly didn't, and you're, you're criticizing me for not doing research, is Seth said that he never gave consent and he told him not to do it, and all David cut in was this clip of him saying, how can I give you consent if I don't know what you're going to do? Which is literally not consent. I'll play he it again. Also, he also explained something that you don't seem to understand, is just the pressure in these situations. 
And as a victim, you may be going along with it because you're on camera, you're trying to look cool, you're trying to be cool with the fans. So the fact that he kind of went along with the second one or whatever, that doesn't mean that it wasn't a traumatic experience or that he has now trauma with himself after the fact. Yeah, that's, that's like, like one of the classic victim shaming, let's say, fallacies. There's like... There's a bunch of victim shaming fallacies and he hits on all of them. One of them is like, why did, why didn't he, why did it take so long to come forward? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's like, I, it's the fact that I even have to explain this stuff is ridiculous because I know he knows this. If it was a girl, he would know this. Why did it take so long for her to come forward? A lot of victims often don't realize that they've been traumatized until years later because it takes time to figure things out in your mind. Okay. Why didn't she leave sooner? I'm just, I'm using it in terms you understand. That's why I'm doing it from the female perspective, because so you understand it, Scotty. Why didn't she leave sooner? A lot of times victim abuser relationships are really complicated, and the victim often wants to please the abuser to be accepted by them, right? It's a complicated relationship. He says later in the video, if it's so serious, why didn't he go to the police? Again, why didn't she go to the police? Another one. I mean, that's such a complicated question to ask. Why didn't it take so long to figure this out to even think, oh, there was a crime, you know? He also, with Seth specifically, there is so much friend, baggage please. with where he comes from. And, I mean, do we really need to go there? Like, it's like, yeah. It may not be that easy for him to go to the police. He hits Something on. you don't understand. I'm, all, I'm saying this now. He hasn't said it yet, but he will. Because he literally hits every single fallacy, victim-shaming fallacy. The, the one he said in the beginning, he was nice to me. Okay, and it doesn't mean that he did anything bad to anyone else. And then he goes on to try to assassinate his character, calls him a clout chaser. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll get into it. I'm getting ahead of myself. But, like, he's so missing the point, bro. The videos, he knows what we do. And then after he knows the what prank we do. was finished, David asked... How is that what you do? <laughs> That's not what you do. You didn't get pranked like that. Show me where you had Jason uh, stick his tongue down your throat and grab your ass. And also have David admit on camera, on his podcast, which Scotty never addresses, that it was racially motivated because he knew he was from Compton. Mm -hmm. Bro. Tim. Too long after that, I had an idea to pull the prank on him again. So I thought it would be fun to play your music. Da, 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 da. Permission to try to prank you again and get you to make out with Jason. I'm very confused by that because how Listen the hell the did consent. you be so confident to tell me that I have to consent to something that I'm not going to know that I'm going to do? <laughs> David Films. Wow. Did you hear consent? Did you hear consent? Well, I think he's alluding to the fact that he cut it out probably or something because he has to cut down the food no that was in the video we talked about it we showed it when we interviewed seth i said what is this he's basically calling seth a liar i know but he didn't nobody cut that out we that was in the original video no he's saying david has to cut out his footage because oh, he shoots for so right. much but the video is only 420 well, yeah but seth explained that he said he never gave him consent yeah. Which is evidenced by the fact it's, that he never showed him saying he It's still beside consent. the point because he's not addressing the first time. He did not right. consent to the first time. Or the second time, though. Or the second time. He didn't consent to the second time. He failed to prove that he consented to the second he, time. He doesn't show footage of showing otherwise. I don't no, know. No, he, I mean. he failed to show that. And Seth already explained this. Which he clearly didn't see. Hours and hours of footage and crams them into 4 minutes and 20 seconds for his vlog. So this clip was cut short to not actually show Seth giving his consent, but showing David so where is asking it? for the when consent. When I first watched now, this, I was like, okay, so show. I was like, okay. I was like, good. I was like, good. If you, if you are showing Seth saying, yes, it's fine, then include it. He never fucking showed it. He literally never showed it. And I was like, what the hell is this sorry ass video? You think David would go and film this bit? If Seth had said no, uh, no, prove it. No way. What am I supposed to just trust you? Like, what the fuck? Are you, what kind of point are you trying to make? Do you really think his his defense is? Do you really think David would do that? <laughs> he is such a nice guy. <laughs> okay, bro. Uh, you think he bleaches his tips? You think that's his natural hair color? I'm just curious because I like his hair color. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm in the market now for <laughs> for tip advice. I think that's natural. Really? I have to hmm. guess. Mm. <laughs> oh, AB says he's a redhead naturally. Wait, is he redhead? No. What? I mean, is that kind yeah. of red hair? That looks red, I guess. Mm. AB's the expert on all this. 
here. He's typing. Go ahead, Ab. You can move. tell me about his oh, hair. I was give me the shoddy hair find. tips. No, I was trying to find a picture of him with his natural hair color. Oh, but yeah, his natural hair is red. Oh, I, oh, that's, wow. not, that's not his natural hair. Yeah. Huh? huh? But Ab's okay. cool. You know, he's not like no. That. You, <laughs> you know, I wonder. You think he'll put me in touch with a stylist? After this video, maybe not. Bro, you literally just sent me a JFIF file. Like, what the fuck <laughs> is this? What am I? Like, AB, what are you sending me? Dude? I'm trying to run a show, not download like Zip like... Converter. <laughs> he sends me a file of a JFIF file. It says it just shows like an empty file. Like, it doesn't know how to open it. Right. I don't know why I saved so like much. that. All right, let's move on. Anyway, nice hair, Scotty. In hell. This is from. Oh, we got the. Okay, this is important. It really isn't. <laughs> Here's his natural hair. Y you're right. It's not important. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Very you're important right. stuff. Let's move on. <laughs> period of time when David was always at my house editing and I very vividly remember when he was editing that clip there was a clip in there of Seth agreeing and giving his permission Where is it? to film this bit again he was like there's no way you're gonna get it on me again there's no way you're gonna get it's me again not yet. so go ahead go for it okay 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 where's the clip bro I mean even if that existed yeah exactly it doesn't address the first time I still don't think that it would change my mind that much no, about it anything it's just it's just more of a comment about how like yeah poorly conceived this video was yeah but you're right because he fails to address the first time by the way and the podcast clip which I think he must not have seen either while accusing me of not doing my research in which David says I'll sh I'll show it again for to because some people may not have seen it in fact let me just sh open it so, Scotty, if you're watching this, I do think that this is a very important clip, which you did not mention, which is from the podcast. You could ever fake. It was so perfect, and I feel so bad, and it's just, it's, it's awful because the poor guy had to go through that, and his friends are probably going to chew him out for that for the next, like, three, five years of his life. <laughs> well, as Seth tells it, the uh, homosexuality is not so accepted in his, where he comes from. <laughs> That's from Compton. Dudes kissing dudes is not so accessible. That's from Compton, so it's like the perfect, like, at least straight dudes kissing it's literally straight the dudes. perfect setup. Like, a guy from Compton, and I made him make out with another older is that man. Good? It's, not it's good for Seth. It gets him some airtime. Air Seth, air Seth was really. <laughs> Yo, Scotty, you didn't respond to that part, dude. Like, why didn't you respond to that if you're all about research and putting out the truth? That seems really fucked up. And you know, uh, something that stands out to me again is when I interviewed Seth, it, stu it struck out to me how they specifically targeted him. Because he was minding his own business, he just got back from the airport, he was driving home, and they specifically call him and say, come over. Like, this prank was for Seth. They specifically targeted Seth. Mm -hmm. And Seth said, I think it's because it was racially motivated. And I was like, well, that'd be messed up if it's true, but like, how can I know? Well, this clip came out and I was like, oh my God, he was right. It was mm -hmm. definitely racially motivated. So, Scotty, I mean, where are you at, bro, on the facts, on the uh, research, you know? Wake up, Scotty. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up, Scotty. <laughs> now you're living. <laughs> I, saw somebody, I saw somebody say that in chat, and it's had to. <laughs> So oh this is after, so now he shows a clip of after, and again, this is all public shit, right? Like we've talked about all this. This is after the second prank, the beef jerky prank. Again, so go ahead, go for it. You're the best. You're the fucking best, David. <laughs> this motherfucker told me. That He's this in was shock, by again. the way. <laughs> if you've listened to Seth talk about it, <laughs> excuse me. He was in shock because he thought he was getting this big commercial deal. He told his family he was depending on the money. And he pulled the fucking rug out from under him. Mm -hmm. It was all fake. And he left him his ass empty handed too, which he didn't mention. About how in the commercial deal he was meant to get 2500 bucks, And um, and then David wasn't going to pay him. He was like, dude, I need that money. Like, I've been And <laughs> it's just the fact that he's even showing this clip just shows how he doesn't know anything about it. Like, Victim again because Seth explained behavior. he's like it was either throw hands or be cool about it. Yeah, he's on camera He's put on the spot. This is like It doesn't mean anything. No It's insane. It's really sad Because it seems like as people say Scotty is an otherwise really nice guy. So mm -hmm. 
it's just weird to see a guy miss the point so much. I think it's more of a testament to the cultish vlog squaddy. And David definitely put him up to this, even if it was up subconscious, by sending him mm -hmm. that extra evidence you get, which you guys will see, and being like, "Yo, like you know what I mean? Like he yeah. knew he was gonna make this video. He fucking let him. He threw his ass to the wolves, bro." Respect the fucking man that keeps his word. <laughs> you can tell by his reaction at the end of the video that he was pranked. It was all in good fun, and he gave permission beforehand. He gave David. Can't for, this is right. no, no. What you're saying is not. First of all, him <laughs> reacting like that is not proof he gave permission. No. I mean, how? What does that mean? What does that even mean? And also, he's in shock. Clear. I mean, dude, stop. Props on getting him with that prank a second time. Some of David's vlogs happen just like in real time, you know, like and, and, and something will happen and he captures it on film. But most of these things are preconceived and everyone talks about like what bit is going to be filmed. So was a lot of one? the things that Seth was in were his ideas. I'm not saying that- Was this one? Was yeah. this one preconceived? Did Seth know? Obviously not, based on the way David talked about it on his podcast and what Seth's first account. Uh, so what is your point here? These kissing pranks were his ideas, but he did give consent to them and he partook in them. You he have not showed any several evidence bits of that. after and before the next ones and was totally fine with it. Like I'd, I'd never heard a word from him about being uncomfortable. <laughs> not was here you? to force anyone to do anything. There's Again, <laughs> bro, you, this is so sad. This is like a, a this is like a tutorial on how to victim shame. So you you never heard him say he's uncomfortable, so therefore it must be a lie. Did you hear him say on our podcast that he was uncomfortable? Do victims of abuse just walk around talking about how about how uncomfortable they are? Yeah. You know, he even said in his interview, which again you didn't watch, about how it took him a while to internalize it and yeah. understand the dynamic of the group and how it was affecting him and how he's like the butt of all these racist jokes again, yeah. which you don't acknowledge. There's a clip somewhere of Seth pranking Jason. Three, okay, so now, two, one, action. now we move on to the um, victim, Dragon or, 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 Seth. the character assassination portion of this video. Okay, Seth did a prank where he put his ass in Jason's face, so it excuses what happened to him. Sorry, bro, I'm not fucking on board with this argument at all. And what's your point of bringing this up exactly? Well, he put a, he's put his ass in Jason's face once, so that totally excuses be being assaulted. Yeah. Like Seth's behind. <laughs> this is like a, everybody's fucking around with each other here. We're all friends and Dude, like, sorry, but assault's we do not dumb shit. Around. David looked through his text messages and found one of Seth's numbers, asking him to do the kissing prank a third time. Seth literally requested to do so it. So this is important. This is where you know David's involved. And this is probably how David got his ass to make the video. And it's a, a, this is interesting because it's an insight to how really David feels about this situation. Yeah. This is David's response, you know? Hmm. So here he goes. A third time. Guys, this is a text from Seth from about two years ago. He goes, yo, bro, I was thinking about it. I'm down for another kissing sketch. I said, haha, what do you mean? He goes, lol, I don't really care as long as you clout me up. I'm not gay, just don't care. And then he sends me this. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's not really a big deal. I mean, it's the same shit. Just, I don't know more open-minded i don't know if seth completely forgot so again he the fact that he says in that that he's more open-minded now means I, that he was pissed that off, he was obviously not pissed off about the, the previous two times but as i as i kind of said it's like the fact that seth asked to do it a third time does not negate anything that happened before i mean it doesn't mean that he can still feel the way he feels now that that is what happens to victims in a, in a abusive situations. You can go back and want it again. And that doesn't mean that two years later, you're going to realize, or 10 years later, you're going to realize that you were in a really fucked up situation. You mm. were being used and abused. And you crave their approval. You crave their attention. You crave their... Um they're approved. Yeah. So, so that, that's how I see this. You're it's just missing the point and you're pointing it as like the big slam dunk. Like, hey, look, he wanted it a third time. No one knew that. Why'd she go back? That's like the why'd she go back then fallacy. Yeah. He wants the approval of David. He wants the approval of the vlog squad. It's this really powerful, potent thing, right? And it's, it's so valid and so much comes with it. So much good things come with it. And then he thinks to himself, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I am overreacting. Maybe mm -hmm. I should 
be cool with them again and be in with them again. Maybe it's good for my career. What am I doing? Why am I withdrawing? I want to, mm -hmm. I want to please them. I need this attention for my career. Yada yada. All these stuff. So he says, you know what? I'm gonna, uh, maybe I should do it again. You know, get him cool with them. It'll be another video. I know I got fucked over the last few times, but this time I'll make sure I don't get fucked over. Clout me up. And he probably feels ashamed about even going back and asking for that third time. Right. It's not really anything to um, it's not like brag a, about. It's not a I'm sure he's very ashamed of that, but that doesn't yeah. mean anything about the accusation. Right. And it's often very complicated like this, and which is a pre reason why victims don't come forward. Yeah. Because there's, there's people who be like, oh, well, this and this and this and this. I was like, okay. Your so feelings like aren't a, valid. It's like you're carrying a lot of guilt and shame. Remember what he said and, at the beginning? So it's don't not come, that easy. Don't, don't tell me your truth if it's a lie. Yeah. Break time. Oh, break time? Mm -hmm. I know it's kind of a... <laughs> mm, let's not do it now. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to do a break now. Peace and love. God about that or if he just hoped that David would never find it the way that he hoped that David had a new computer and didn't have the extra four hours of footage no I don't okay wait let me go back fucking dumbass I don't think he forgot about it dude yeah I'm sure he didn't I don't know more open-minded I don't know if Seth completely forgot about that or if he just hoped that David would never find it the way that he hoped that David had a new computer and didn't have the extra four hours of footage that surrounded the four minute and 20 vlog. That so what is he referring to? Because I haven't seen that footage. He's, he's just saying, saying that he doesn't have the footage. Yeah, he he's saying, Oh, how convenient. Yeah, yeah. he's saying, though, he that Seth is lying, supposedly. So, but, but that's interesting because it implies that they were looking for it together. Mm. Right. Probably right. They were. Mm -hmm. We got to take this fucking Seth guy out instead of just apologizing to him. Yeah. Because that would have still been only consent for the second time. But what about the first time? Yeah, you're still always, not addressing. Ignoring the racially still motivated first time. Not addressing it. Yeah.